Welcome to Heresy Today. Earlier this month, Pope Francis issued a written greeting to Muslims in recognition of the closing of the Islamic holiday of Ramadan. In it, the Pope made any number of unbiblical comments, further adding to the questions regarding the official doctrine of the Catholic Church. While some who belong to the Catholic Church do not put their faith in their own good works or in the blessings of dead saints whom others pray to or through, the official Catholic Church does seem to promote a works-based salvation and access to God through means other than Jesus Christ. Pope Francis added to this ambiguity with his comments in this greeting to Muslims. He wrote, Turning to mutual respect and inter-religious relations, especially between Christians and Muslims, we are called to respect the religion of others, its teachings, its symbols, its values. This is definitely an odd statement considering one of the greatest sins of the children of Israel was their worship of gods other than Yahweh. Through the words of the Old Testament prophets, God repeatedly warns the children of Israel of severe punishment for their idolatry, often equating it with harlotry. In Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, God says, Every man is stupid, devoid of knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his molten images are deceitful, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of mockery, in the time of their punishment, they will perish. God calls idols a work of mockery. Whether these idols are created with men's hands or with men's minds, they are false gods with no life in them, an affront to the only living God. People often create a God in their own mind that they are more comfortable with. Not surprisingly, their God allows them to continue in their sin without punishment. In his Ramadan message to Muslims, the Pope went on to say, Regarding the education of Muslim and Christian youth, we have to bring up our young people to think and speak respectfully of other religions and their followers and to avoid ridicule or denigrating their convictions and practices. While it's true that we should not denigrate people, if we love them, we will surely warn them of the consequences of worshiping false gods. This makes one wonder what the Pope thinks happens to Muslims after they die who don't repent and believe in Jesus Christ. The consequences of worshiping false gods is an eternity of conscious, physical torment and punishment in hell. If we love people, we'll give them this warning. Jesus warned in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is one way to the Father, there is one way to heaven, and it's only through repentance and belief in Jesus Christ as the atoning sacrifice for our crimes against God. People who put their faith in any other means, false gods, dead saints, or their own works, will be held to account for their sins on Judgment Day. God warns us in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 28, of the futility of relying on anyone but Him. But where are your gods which you made for yourself? Let them arise if they can save you in the time of your trouble. The fact that the Pope is recommending to children that they be taught to respect false gods and false religions in light of the consequences is staggering. Once again, we see the work of the devil in teaching the world to tolerate sin. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, God tells us, You shall have no other gods beside me. Therefore, worshiping, respecting, tolerating false gods and idolatry directly disobeys God's very first commandment. Of course the devil wants people to be taught that it's okay to accept other gods. But who are these other gods, really? The Bible tells us. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, God warns the children of Israel that they would go after other gods. Starting in verse 16, God says through Moses, They made him jealous with strange gods, with abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons who were not God, 
to gods whom they had not known, new gods who came lately, whom your fathers did not dread. As we can see from these verses, these false gods are demons, fallen angels, God's enemy. To say that we should accept and respect the worship of demons is flatly heretical. Lest anyone think this mentality is limited to the Catholic Church, one only needs to see the ecumenicalism in the professing church today. False teachers such as Rick Warren promote interfaith dialogue. In an age when we're told to accept everyone and everything, those who reject dialogue with demons are seen as outsiders, fringe Christians, and hateful bigots. Is it bigoted to only worship the one true God? Was Jesus a bigot for proclaiming himself the only way to the Father? And what about Elijah? In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 20 to 40, we read of the confrontation with the 450 prophets of Baal. God did not command Elijah to dialogue with these prophets. God did not command Elijah to respect these prophets. God did not command Elijah to work with these prophets for the social welfare of the people. No, quite the contrary. In verse 40 we read, And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. This was a punishment directed by God on the false prophets of Baal. We are not commanded by God to go out and murder the leaders of other religions, but neither are we commanded to respect their false religions and false gods. We are not commanded to work with them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17, we read, Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness and iniquity? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What agreement has Christ with Belial? Or what portion has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are a temple of the living God, even as God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing. I will receive you. Again, in verse 15, we see false gods referred to as demonic. Belial is a name given to Satan. In an ecumenical meeting in March of this year, Pope Francis praised Muslim leaders as men who adore the one living and merciful God and who call upon him in prayer. The Muslim God is not the God of the Bible. The other religions and philosophies of this world rely on men's works to get them to a better place after they die. Whether it's nirvana, enlightenment, reincarnation, or whatever other reward is promised, these false religions promise these rewards as a result of good works, the efforts of men. But only the perfect sacrifice of Jesus can satisfy God's perfect justice. God's wrath fell on Jesus for our sins, for our crimes against God. And God accepted the payment Jesus made for our crimes and raised him from the dead so we too can have eternal life forever with God. God makes it clear in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 that we cannot earn our own way as the demonic religions and philosophies promise. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's no surprise that the devil would promote the acceptance and respect of religions that rely on men's pride rather than God's grace. People like the idea that they can avoid repentance, turning from the sins they love, by simply making up for those sins with their supposedly good works. What a deception! As with all the things of the devil, this is a complete contradiction of the truth. For anyone who calls themselves a Christian to say that we're all worshiping the same God simply demonstrates a lack of knowledge of the God they claim to believe in. That church leaders would trivialize such a thing, a thing that God detests so much and that has such dire eternal consequences, is clearly heretical and hateful. Are they so ashamed of the truth of the gospel that they would rather embrace demons 
than share the good news of Jesus? We should help those who are trapped in false religions. We should warn them of the eternal consequences of worshiping false gods, demonic gods. We should tell them of the good news of salvation, the free gift of God through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. If we love them, if we love God, if we value the sacrifice that Jesus made available to all people, we will share this good news and not leave people trapped in demonic faiths that will only ensure their eternal destruction. If you are in a church that practices this ecumenical interfaith dialogue, urge your church leaders to stop immediately. The devil will use social justice as a way to instill tolerance of demonic gods into the hearts and minds of the people of your church. This idea that we all worship the same God is already a dominant belief among young people. Fight to stop this demonic plot to undermine the true church. If your church refuses to turn from these things, leave your church. Start another church with those true believers you know who do not embrace or accept false gods and false religions. Stand up for the true God, the living God, and have nothing to do with the false gods of this world. Come out from among them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing. That goes for all the sinful things this world offers, including false gods and false assurance. That's it for this week. May God bless you and strengthen you for the fight ahead. Praise God always. We'll see you next week. <laughs>